All right, Eric, we're back to you guys just a little bit. UConn 92-0 now, all-time in the American Conference. Regular season games, kind of the postseason, 107-0 against conference play. So they have dominated the American Conference. Hard to believe when you look at those numbers, just how dominant they have been. But tonight was a, 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 really another example of that. And, you know, we've spoken so much about and You spent a lot of time on our pregame show giving shooting lessons to Katie Lou Samuels. <laughs> right? She didn't shoot it all that well from downtown, but she did bounce back. She had 21 points. Yeah on 9 of 18 shooting, and we've spoken so many times in the past about the fact UConn's going to go where Katie Lou takes them. Yeah, absolutely. And and what I loved about Katie Lou tonight, she got, broke out of the, the shooting slump a little bit, not from three-point land, but she broke out. You could see the confidence. She had more confidence while shooting, but she also got her teammates involved. She had five assists to go along with that. Oftentimes, you see leading scorers, they don't share the basketball. She shares the basketball. She's doing it. Again, we've said this before, Katie Lou Samuelson has evolved from a shooter to a scorer, and she's doing other things as well, rebounding the basketball, taking charges, things that don't show up on a stat sheet for Katie Lou all around played like a senior tonight is that just understanding the game a little bit more and as you mentioned she played like a senior tonight just taking that leadership role definitely a leadership role definitely you can see the growth in her as far as and we use the term all the time basketball IQ she's a much smarter player than she was obviously as a freshman she's grown uh, just smart really smart she took you know some blame for crystal could have had more assists but she blew a couple of those shots I just love the way the chemistry you can see the chemistry developing her and Nafisa and Crystal and like they're really starting to come together and that's in part due to that leadership that's really coming out so you mentioned Nafisa she had another strong game coming off her 10th double double of the season last time out against Temple she had 30 in that game she had 22 in tonight's game with eight rebounds she would have had a double double if she had played more down the stretch right but it was a blowout and For she sure. was on on the bench and she tied her career high with six blocks she is the ultimate I want to say a, a stat sheet stuffer, right? I yes. mean, she does uh, so many different things so well out there. So many different things and, and even things that aren't on the stat sheet. I mean, she is a coach's dream as far as consistency. You know what you're going to get from her. Yes, she had a slump, I guess, where she's not making shots, but that that's not what a coach means. A coach means you know what you're getting from her as far as effort on the defensive end, the hustling, that sort of thing. So even when the shots aren't falling, you know you have somebody like Nafisa Collier to depend on. And I just love how she's getting it done from the end inside the outside getting arc on that shot that whatever she did to tweak her shot looks like it's working for her and then on the defensive end you know great players don't rest on the defensive end and Nafisa Collier is a prime example of working both ends of the court also in the post game and outside just all around really versatile game for her that was a really good pass right there from Katie Lou inside to Nafisa but how about the position mm. that she establishes on the low block well a post player does their work before the basketball comes in and it's all about footwork and and positioning and and Nafisa Collier if you watch her feet even before she sets up to shoot an outside shot she does a really good job of gathering herself with the footwork in the post she does a good job of sealing asking for the ball and you can see how they work together so well Katie Lou Samuelson leads her to the basket she doesn't pass to where she is she passes to where she wants to be and she knows exactly where Nafisa Collier wants to be let's get a look right now at tonight's game stats they are presented by People's United Bank as UConn goes to 17 and 1 on the season they hold SMU to 26% shooting. There's that defense that has been much discussed. How about the fact that SMU out-rebounded UConn? We'll talk about that a little bit. But they did force 24 turnovers, and there's that there's that defense again. As we go back to Gamble Pavilion right now, welcome back in, Eric and Megan. 26 points, guys, for UConn off those 24 turnovers by SMU. And as you mentioned a moment ago, it was a huge emphasis leading up to this game and in practice this week. And I think SMU was really caught off guard, right, by that full court pressure out of the gate. They didn't know they didn't know really what came at them. Well, 24 of those 26 points off turnovers came in the first half, so that's where the tone was set. And we touched on it. When you see a roster and you see, well, they're playing how many freshmen, <laughs> how many underclassmen, they're only seniors. Froling who's a grad student. So there's no way to replicate what UConn does in a game in your practice. And I think SMU, Travis Mays, was <laughs> fully aware of what was going to happen yes, here today. Yes, and he tried to tell the, his players at shoot-around today, trust me when I make these in-game adjustments, just tr please try and trust me. Well, they were looking at him like a deer in headlights. I don't think they were quite prepared, but they will be next time. He's a great coach. He'll have them prepared, and this experience will help them down the road. And by the way, I heard Gary just mention that Kara was giving shooting lessons <laughs> before the game. I mean, when you shoot 63% in your career like Kara did here at UConn, 
You listen to whatever she has to offer. Yeah, okay. Eric with the stats. Let's, let's go with that. <laughs> Hey guys! Hey, let's let's take care. Let's talk about Megan Walker a little bit. I thought she had another solid game for her. Do you think she's turned the corner a little bit about figuring out or what's needed from her to win a national championship? You know, she did a couple little things today. You know, she was good from outside the three-point line, Kara, three for three, and she had three steals. And I think that's the stuff you're looking for. The the rebounding numbers weren't great here today. Right. And as you touched on a moment ago, Gary, you know, they were minus 11 overall against SMU. So I think that's a line that they're always going to point to. How can you only get four rebounds in a game? Right. You should be around seven or eight every game. But her effort has been there. She, You know, she's playing hard. She's competing. I thought that three... The right corner three. The yep. corner three to end the first half as the horn was sounding. And then anytime you can see that kid smile and show emotion on the court, I think that's a good thing. She had another three at the other end of the court in the beginning of the second half. So the more involved they can continue her in the offense, and then she'll get in traffic and, and make things happen. You make a good point. We saw it in Tulane. That smile was wide. And I, I think we commented during the game, and certainly after, we haven't seen her smile too much in her time here at UConn. It has been a struggle, and you've pointed out that as a freshman, Megan Walker struggle. That's something that Kristen Williams could look at right now as she makes the progression towards next year. But we've seen more smiles from Megan Walker in the last week and a half mm -hmm. than I think we saw in the first year and a half for her time here at UConn. Yeah, and Kara, to your point, I think she's turned the corner. She's having some fun, and she'll play a little lighter as the season goes on, which will lead to more productivity. Yeah, she looks she looks like a much more confident player uh, at the moment. Eric and Meg, we thank you both. Terrific, as always. See you guys uh, down the road. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Guys. Thanks, guys. Take care. Uh, as, as they were talking about right there, smiles from Megan Walker, yeah. right? And, and you were commenting on it as this game was un, uh, unfolding tonight that even though she's, she only had 11 points in the game, it wasn't yeah. 34 like she had against Tulane, mm -hmm. but she looks confident, right? She yeah. seems to know her place on the floor and where she can be effective. Yeah, and she's always ready to get the ball. I mean, there were times where there was penetration and kick to her on the three-point land. She was perfect from out there. So she's really getting, um, moving without the basketball, setting herself up up doing the little things like Eric said rebounding could have been a little better could have been a little better for the whole team SMU killed them on the offensive board so that's something that Gina will look at and not be happy with because you have to nitpick right yes We're, you that's must how you get better um, but all in all I, I, I think Megan Walker is, is being like playing solid and making progress and putting games back to back to become consistent one of the things Gino is going to be happy about and he spoke about it with Justine a short time ago the way they shared the basketball, yeah. 26 assists on 31 made baskets. I mean, that's yeah. unselfish. They saw the open player. They moved the ball quickly, and it was really a thing of beauty to watch. It, and and it all starts with their spacing. They have really good spacing to enable them to draw defense and then kick. And they always make the extra pass, the unselfish play, the easiest play that they can get to get the best shot. And you almost take it for granted because that doesn't happen on every team. They don't make the extra pass. They don't share the basketball so well. But everybody is capable of scoring, so they're just looking to get the best shot. But the way they share the basketball is textbook. And you always tell the young kids, why? Watch UConn. The way they share the basketball is a fundamental thing that you can't always teach, and you have to just be smart and make the extra pass, and boy, UConn makes it look easy. And, and the ball not touching the floor, right? That, yeah. that basket we saw by Collier inside, it was boom, boom, boom yep. to the low post, and then the layup, and the ball never hit the floor. I mean, yep. basketball in its purest form, I've always said, is like a ballet, right? It's yep. a thing of beauty to watch when it's played correctly, yes. and in those sorts of situations, when UConn you know, moves the ball from side to side and it doesn't touch the floor. It is just the way, I mean, I, I didn't know him personally, but the way I believe Mr. Naismith yes. thought the game should be played, right? I yes. Mean, yes. Yeah, well, that's what I hate to say, but that's what I like about women's basketball. That's a mm. little different than men's basketball. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one and that sort of thing. But to me, it's fun to watch women's basketball, the way they share the basketball. Very unselfish play from UConn. Uh, as far as Crystal Dangerfield, you know, she's coming off that really big game last time out. She had 26, not assists, no turnovers. And Gino said a short time ago, he thought she may have been even better tonight, even though she had just eight points. But she did have eight assists, and it could have been it could have been 15. Yeah, and, and Nafisa and Katie twice, the two seniors, kind of, uh, they, they blew it on that one. She could have had 10, but 
But you know what I love? The way she shares the basketball. I mean, do you, it's the, look at that. The non-look passes. The, just, the court awareness by her is phenomenal. And just because you have a point guard out there doesn't mean she sees the floor as well as somebody like Crystal Dangerfield. And she did a good job getting everybody involved, managing the game, and, and just being present as far as knowing when she can get people the ball at the right spots. And Gina was clearly, clearly thrilled with her play, and she looks as confident as ever. Well, those numbers show right there she leads the american conference at assist per game and you, know, you always wonder whose team is this is it katie lou's team is it nafisa collier's team but when you've got a point guard who controls the action the way yeah. crystal dangerfield does and you and i've had discussions in the past about just how valuable mariah jefferson was on those teams that won four consecutive national championships you know it was stewie's team right she right. was the one who was the, the centerpiece but when you've got a point guard mm -hmm. who can do what somebody like mariah did and what Crystal does for this team, that's a game changer. It is because Katie Lou and Nafisa wouldn't be as good without yeah. Crystal Dangerfield. But I think sometimes that's overlooked a little bit um, as far as point guards, just that's what they're supposed to do, right? Well, not all point guards can do what Crystal Dangerfield does. So I think this year more than ever, Gary, this is by committee. This is a team that's not one person. It's it's by committee defensively because they don't have that one person like Gabby to like steal the basketball and go. There's good trapping. There's things. Everything they're doing is team defense, uh, team offense, and and definitely not a one person show on this team this year. So UConn ten and zero all time now against SMU. They get the win by forty tonight, seventy nine to thirty nine at Gamble Pavilion. So Kara and I were just getting going here on the People's United Bank post game show. When we come back, I want to have complete game highlights. We'll hear more from the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriyama, his address to the media following tonight's game. Plus, going to hear from Katie Lou Samuelson, who had 21. And we're coming back in just a moment. The UConn Women's Basketball Postgame Show is presented by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do for you. Gary Apple back alongside Kara Walters. Here we go. Complete game highlights. Katie Lou Samuelson held scoreless in the first half against Temple on Saturday. Different story tonight off the terrific defense. It's Katie Lou gliding in for the easy layup. And UConn was off and running later in that first quarter. Huskies up by six. And then Collier going to work inside. Well, she sets a good screen. That's what starts that. She rolls to the basket. Her point guard finds her. Molly Bent's been getting some playing time in recent days. Samuelson on the break right here. Going to take the uncontested shot for the bucket. UConn 14 points off turnovers in that first quarter. And then in the second quarter, Huskies up by 20 SMU had the basketball. Mackenzie Ellis going to go up for the shot, but look at Collier coming in. She never gives up on that She play. was all over the court tonight. Nafisa Collier with six monster blocks. She had four of those in the first half, and then Walker going to score inside right here. We've talked about the emergence of Megan Walker. The emergence of her and the unselfish, amazing pass by Crystal Dangerfield. Final seconds of that second quarter. Walker going to knock down the corner three to beat the buzzer, and Connecticut had the lead by 30 at the break. In the third, UConn off and running once again. They did a tremendous job. Rebounding the basketball, outlet just getting it, filling the lanes. Katie Lou, I like it. She said, Kristen, you need to make this. Get some confidence, and back she goes. Kristen Williams had a dozen points later in that third. Huskies up by 32. Katie Lou getting the puppies set. Nothing but nylon. She had 21, 3 of 10 from beyond the arc. Soon after that, Dangerfield grabbing the loose ball. And then back the other way we go, and there's Dangerfield. No look to Samuelson. And she's so fast. She pushes the ball. She's way ahead of the pack. She sees out of the corner of her eye her teammate and hits her. Behind the back, and again, another really good pass inside this time to Collier. Dangerfield had eight assists along the way as UConn gets the win 79-39. They go to 17-1 and on the season, 6-0 in the American Conference. They put seven in the scoring column tonight, led by Nafisa Collier. She had 22, and Katie Lou Samuelson chipped in with 21. And here she is with Justine Ward. Katie Lou, how did defense set the tone for you guys today? Um, you know, we just came out there. We played as hard as we could. We've been working on that in practice, our press, and if we can really get after it like that, like we did tonight, it's going to be really good for us. Do you feel you took a step forward offensively? Um, absolutely. I mean, I'm just trying to contribute um, in any way I can. Um, even when the shot's not falling, there's always ways that I can help the team. Crystal Dangerfield had eight assists in this game. How was she setting up some of those plays for you guys? Well, Fee and I should really apologize to Crystal. We missed some crucial ones that would have been 
probably top 10. So um, that's on us. She would have had 10 tonight, but uh, she was passing great. Um, she probably could have had 15 the way she was passing and moving the ball. UCF is a tough matchup. What do you remember about playing them last year? They're just so aggressive. They're always ready to go. And, you know, every year it seems like they've gotten better since, you know, my freshman year here. And um, they're, they're tough and they really do what we don't take very well, which is pressure. And, um, you know, we're going to try to attack as much as we can, but we're going to get ready for them. Katie Lou Samuelson, thank you so much. 21 points, five assists for the senior. All right, Justine and Katie Lou, we thank you both. I thought it was interesting she said right there, you know, even if I'm not scoring, yes. which she didn't do very much of against Temple, she, she can contribute in so many different ways. And a lot of scorers don't have that mentality, right? If yeah. you're a scorer, you score the basketball, and then if you're not scoring, you sort of drift out of the game sometimes, right. but that's not the mentality that she has. So that just shows you the growth in Katie Lou Samuelson as far as, become, you know, going from a shooter to, like, an all-around basketball player. And... Everyone keeps focusing on her not hitting shots, including us, because we broke it down in the beginning. However, her being such a good player, she said, you know what? I'm going to let the shots come to me. I'm going to do other things, put myself in a position, and when it happens, it happens. Good shooters keep shooting, and Katie Lou Samuelson has been doing other things, getting rebounds, setting up her teammates, passing the ball well. So it'll fall. I mean, she's one of the best shooters around, right? So it'll fall eventually, but if you do other things and don't focus on missing shots, Good things will happen. UConn took care of the basketball tonight. That was another thing they did, they did very well. They had 17 turnovers last time out against Temple. They had just six in tonight's win over SMU again. 79-39, the Huskies get the win. When we come back, I want to hear more from the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriama, his post-game address to the media, plus going to have the drive of the game. We see it again right there. The good extra pass, right? And then the nice feed inside. Well, UConn shared the ball awfully well tonight. We're back in a moment. Time now for the drive of the game. It is presented by Subaru. Here we go. UConn back the other way. Crystal Dangerfield spotting Katie Lou Samuelson off the wing. She lays it in. Great hustle here. Pick up the loose ball and then no look to Katie Lou for the bucket. UConn getting the 40-point win tonight. It is your drive of the game. It is presented by Subaru. UConn has now won six in a row since that defeat to Baylor back on January the 3rd. Let's hear from the head coach. Here's Gino Oriema, his post-game address to the media. Coach, you did a lot of uh, a lot of pressing, a lot of trapping in the first half. Was that something that did, that you wanted to work on for this game? And, and how do you think that worked out? I thought it worked out pretty good. You know, I mean, we're trying to get um, trying to get ourselves a, some easy buckets. You know, um, if we can, and try to get the game going a little bit quicker, um, create as many possessions as we can. Um, you know, you, I thought it worked out pretty well. I don't know that it's something that you can do for 40 minutes every single game against every single team, but I think, uh, you know, there's a time and place for it. And uh, I thought <clears throat> I thought we were pretty active in it. I thought we were pretty aggressive in it. Um, you know, <clears throat> since Gabby and Kia graduated, you know, we don't create as much uh, off our defense. You know, um, those two really got us a lot of <clears throat> opportunities def from our defense. So just trying to figure out ways to do it. Do you know to follow up on that, does playing like that when it goes a little more faster, does it help Crystal and in, in, in what ways? And how do you feel, you know, putting together another terrific game tonight? Yeah. Yeah, it does. I mean, obviously she gets an... She gets a chance to be out in the open floor and, um, you know, make plays for herself and for others. Um, you know, right, right now, um, you, you know, I, I think the, the, the basketball world is, if you're not careful, is stand around and wait to shoot a three. You know, I mean, if you, if you watch, you know, that's, that's kind of what basketball has become, you know, and, um, I, I think there's got to be there's got to be something else to the game, you know, even though we took, you know, half the shots we took were threes. I mean, I'm not crazy about it, but I, I think we also got a lot of good stuff when Crystal got inside the lane. And if we can get her more opportunities to do that, I think that's better. Because even if those threes come after we get in the lane, then that's a good one, I think. I, 
I think too many times it's just throw the ball around and whose turn is it to shoot. But I think we got in the lane a lot today and were able to get some kickouts. Gino, you, know, you got a pretty good look at your bench in the fourth quarter. What did you notice? It was eight to four. We killed them. So I thought the bench was fabulous. They, we doubled them up. I think that was one of the best quarters they've had. We outscored them. Other than that, they weren't very impressive. But, you know, what can I tell you? That's uh, what it is. What was it like to, you know, have that moment with uh, Katie Lou before the game to celebrate her accomplishment and then, you know, watch her go out and have a great game the way she did? You know, 2,000 points is a lot of points. Um, you know, we've had a couple players do that in the past. Then um, you got to be pretty consistent and you got to do it for the whole four years. And um, it helps when you make a bunch of threes like she, like she has in her career. But... Um, um, you know, uh, it's not easy being <clears throat> being targeted, you know, when you're a three-point shooter. And, and, you know, if you have three three-point shooters on your team that are great, then maybe it's a little bit easier. But there's a lot of pressure on Lou because, you know, she's got to make a bunch for us to, to be really, really effective. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of her. So how about Gino? A little bit of, uh, well, I, I think it was Gino's sarcasm talking about his bench. They outscored the SMU bench 8-4 to four in that fourth quarter. He said that was pretty much it. But we've talked about the fact that they are going to need to find something from that bench before this season is out. Yeah, I mean, I thought uh, Nelson Adota, the last game, she had some good minutes with her yes. seven points and seven rebounds. Not as good tonight um but it, you just he's kind of grasping he's waiting for someone to stand up somebody and you know who stuck out to me is molly bent i think molly bent's done a terrific job off the bench trying to earn minutes trying to earn gino's trust that's the important part like you can feel with his sarcasm he doesn't trust any of his bench so how am i going to play you if i don't trust you and you don't know what your role is i think that's the frustration with gino right now trying to figure that out and Going forward, he's going to need the bench. He's going to need to rely on people, and that's what this conference play is about. But I have to tell you, if I'm sitting on the bench, any second I get in that game, I have something to prove. And I don't always feel like that's the case with the bench. They should feel like they have something to prove every minute they get out there. I know Nelson Adota did not score in tonight's game, but she did have three blocks mm -hmm. in the game. And I still think Fort's all said and done this year. Uh, she's big, 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 mm -hmm. She's going to provide some quality minutes before it's all said done. They need somebody in that post who can block some shots. And she's really, I mean, Nafisa can do it, we know that, but yeah. she's really the only one. We saw a couple of times today come from the weak side, yep. get a couple of easy blocks. I, I think before it's all said and done, she might provide some solid bits. I might be wrong there, but I think it's going to be a necessity. Yeah, no, and that's what he's looking to make sure she's got growth, you know? she Not that they have the luxury, but a little more so with her, the luxury compared to Kristen Williams being thrown into the starting lineup. The thing about her is, typical freshman thing, need to work hard every practice. That's where you get better. And to her, it's her strength, Gare. It's, it's, it's the physicality of the game. It's about not shying away from contact, but going at it, um, putting on weight. You know, they have her in the weight room doing, doing extra work to get stronger. So I think the combination of being a freshman, figuring out you have to work hard all the time, every practice to earn trust in minutes, and then being a physical presence in there. But all you have to do is start blocking a few shots, and then people think twice about coming in there. And even if you don't get a block, you have people thinking. You're in their head. So that's going to be needed down the line, and they've developed her, and hopefully... She continues. When we come back, going to take a look at the sights and sounds of UConn's win tonight at Gamble Pavilion. As again, they go to 17 and one on the year. SMU falls to seven and a dozen, one and five in the conference. Plus, we'll take a look ahead. What's up next for the Huskies? Back in just a moment. The UConn Women's Basketball Postgame Show is presented by People's United Bank. See what Know How can do for you. Here's a look right now. UConn's upcoming schedule is presented by Town Fair Tired. The Huskies going to take on Central Florida on Sunday, and then it's back-to-back -back games on the road against Louisville and Cincinnati before they come back home, take on East Carolina and then Temple. UConn's next game here on SNY going to be Saturday, February 2nd against Cincinnati. Be sure to tune in beginning 
At 11.30 a.m., Karen and I get you set for all the action on the UConn women's basketball pregame show. We'll get that uh, day going early, Karen, so we'll set the alarm very, very early for that day. Uh, UCF coming up over the weekend. They are physical, right? Yeah, They'll try yeah. to push UConn around a if, little bit. If you can't beat them, beat them up. And yes. That's what UCF's going to try to do against UConn, and they need to make sure they don't get back on their heels. Punch first is what Gina wants them to do, so... That's what they have to do. We shall see coming up in a mere matter of moments. It is the Gino Oriema Show. And so for Kara, I'm Gary. We thank you for joining us on the way out the door. The sights and sounds of UConn's win tonight over SMU. Beautiful feed to Collier for two. And a clean breakout for Samuelson. Samuelson, is this the one? Danger field. Look away to Walker for two. Four seconds. Walker corner three is good. Two on one the other way. Samuelson back to Williams. Dangerfield wins the race to the basketball, and Dangerfield drops it down to Samuelson for two. UConn wins again.